Everyone has emotions. Processing emotions and allowing people to see what we think we should hide or conceal or stop or keep quiet, for me, is part of my mission. Because I want you to know that it's safe to feel your emotions because the only way out is through. You want to get to the other side of it, you got to feel it. You got to move through it. And I want that to be, I want that to be normal. Welcome, Badass Manifester. I am so glad you are here. I'm your host and head coach, Ashley Gordon, master mindset and manifestation biz expert, founder of the Quantum Coaching Certification, and multiple six-figure entrepreneur obsessed with empowering you to create quantum leaps in your energy, your life, and your business. This is the show to help you make magic your everyday normal where the ripple effect is real, and the guest experts are world class. My mission is to power your conscious and subconscious mind with manifestation teachings, business tools, and coaching techniques to put your potential into action. Consider this your weekly up level. Are you ready for quantum transformation? Let's do this. Hello, badass manifester. Welcome back to another episode And as I record this, it is Friday evening, it's about 9 o'clock, and I have the comfiest pajamas on right now with a delicious cup of berry zing tea. It is so good. And I don't have a script or a plan for today's podcast. I have one note written down on the notebook aside of me, and I'm going to share that with you in a moment. But this episode is really going to be just a stream of consciousness, sharing about what is going on with me internally and how to apply it to your life, how to take some of these lessons that I've been getting and the wisdom that I've been um, tuning into and sharing that with you to download into your consciousness, into your humanness, into your beingness. So The plan today is no plan. It's stream of consciousness. I used to record episodes like this all the time. I haven't in a long time, and I'm excited to just flow with it as we go. Um, To kick it off, I'll just share with you what I have written down on the notebook. And the one sentence that I have written down is, I love you right there. I love you right there. Right where you are. With what, whatever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, whatever your challenge is, I love you right there. This is something that one of my spiritual mentors has taught me about myself. And no matter the season of my life, can I, can I continue, no matter what's going on in my world, to love myself right there and right there and right there? And right there. Can I love myself even if I feel guilt? Can I love myself even if I'm mad at my body? Can I love myself even if I feel sad? Can I love myself in those moments? It's really powerful. I'm in a season of my life right now that I've never been in before. And it's a season of loss. It's a season of losing two of the most important people in my life, uh, my grandfather and my dad. And it's a season of loss also because as I'm on this fertility journey every month, hoping for baby and then getting a negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test, it just feels, feels like a lot. It feels like a wave that keeps hitting you and you can't fully catch your breath from it yet but it like keeps hitting you and it's not that I'm getting knocked down it's just I'm just getting tired of swimming right like it's like it's that feeling and I don't say that to like be depressed I'm not depressed at all I'm grieving I'm grieving a lot of different things and emotions and feelings and people and experiences and I know I said I was going to do an episode on grieving And I think that this is going to be weaved into what I share tonight, today. (laughs) Um, And with that, I'll share like, we all have seasons of our life that we move through. 
And I know right now that I'm not the only one grieving. You might be grieving something or someone. And I want you to know that I love you right there. And I'm sending you so much love during this time. And I hope that you are giving yourself what you need when you need it. And I hope that this episode helps. For years in my life, I I had rose-colored glasses on. And I still have my rose-colored glasses, right? But everything I saw was rainbows and butterflies and death wasn't real. And I was never going to lose anyone in my life. And nothing was going to go bad or wrong. And I was spiritually bypassing a lot of emotions because I didn't fully understand how to process emotions. And it wasn't until the last like four or five years that I realized that our emotions are never meant to be suppressed, that we have all of them for a reason and there's no bad emotions. And so when we go through things and we stuff down how how we feel or we don't allow ourselves to feel grief, it really creates Um, resistance in our body. It really creates dis-ease in our body. That's literally disease, right? You've probably heard of that before. And I remember in the beginning of my relationship with Todd, if ever I was to get emotional or cry about something, he'd be like, stop crying, like stop crying. And he didn't understand. But as, as, and I didn't either. But as soon as I started to learn about my emotions, I asked him, please let me just process whatever's coming up for me. If I want to cry, let me cry. If I want to laugh, let me laugh, right? Like it's like whatever it is, just let me move through it. And now he knows to let me process through that, which is so cool. And think about it. Why should we say, shh, don't cry, but we don't say that really about laughing. We don't say that about joy. Like, oh, don't be too happy right now. Like, no, nobody says that. So why would we do that with our quote unquote negative emotions, right? With the lower emotional scale. Think about that. Emotion is energy in motion. And that energy needs to be moved out. And I'm finding that that's very much so my process as I move through grieving. We're never going to be prepared to grieve in life, right? We're nev- that's never something that you could ever be prepared for. Even if you know it's coming, it still hurts. It still sucks. It fucking sucks. It does. And what I'm realizing and what I've realized is that the only way out is through. That's been one of my biggest lessons in 2020. The only way out is through. And what that looks like is acknowledging your emotions as they come up and moving through them. I got a DM the other day from a beautiful soul, Rosie Love. Shout out Rosie. And she said how um, she was, she's in the Manifest Your Magic bundle because she bought the Bundle Co., and she was moving through some of the some of the course material and she was like, well, how do I pay attention to my thought patterns? And my simple answer back to her was, just pay attention to how you feel. If you can pay attention to how you feel, you can understand what's in alignment and what's out of alignment for you. Because when things feel really bad or sad, that's your sign to like move through that energy to feel what feels true and or false, right? Like when we're believing in lack, it's just our higher selves making us feel bad to help us realize that we're believing in something that's not actually true. So with that, when grief comes up or sadness comes up or guilt comes up or um, missing someone comes up, I fully allow myself to feel that experience. Um something happened yesterday where I went, I I shared on Instagram in the morning. Uh, I share a lot on my stories. I shared on Instagram about how it's a new beginning. Today was the start of a new fertility cycle. And yesterday night was the start of Quantum Coaching Academy 2021 cohort. And it was also the new moon the night before. So it was like a fresh beginning. And I also shared that my best friend has pep talked to me all of my best friends do and Sadie told me that everything that I've ever accomplished in my life has come from consistency and there have been times where on the fertility journey I wanted to take breaks and I have and this past time I was like I don't know if I should take a break or not and I just remembered what she told me about consistency 
And I can't help but compare that to my business where, you know, in the beginning of business, things don't work out, you know, (laughs) just like a negative pregnancy test doesn't work out, right? Like you launch a product, it doesn't work out. And what do you do? You, you keep going. You don't just say, oh, that's it. Not meant to be going to close up shop. I mean, some people do, but really If you stay consistent, you're going to strike gold. It's going to happen. You're going to make it. And having that reminder for me on my journey has been so helpful. And so what happened was, um, was I, I went to the doctor after I posted this on my stories. And then afterwards I got like all these messages of, of friends and, community members and past students and clients being like, we're rooting for you. We're cheering you on. Like we're here for you. Like I just broke down in the car. I was just hysterically crying and I actually posted it on social media. I posted it on my story and I just shared that moment because I feel so guided to talk about normalizing emotion and how it doesn't matter if you're a world renowned master coach It doesn't matter if you're a fucking guru. You, everyone has emotions. And processing emotions and allowing people to see what we think we should hide or conceal or stop or keep quiet, for me, is part of my mission. Because I want you to know that it's safe to feel your emotions because the only way out is through. You want to get to the other side of it, you got to feel it. You got to move through it. And I want that to be, I want that to be normal. It's so not normal. It's like we're weak if we feel emotion. That's bullshit. You're strong if you feel emotion. You are strong. It takes something to allow yourself to feel that. So it was a very vulnerable moment for me. And I literally, literally ugly cried on my stories for like two seconds and Later that night, I showed up on my stories after QCA launch, and I was like, oh my god, I I just feel so grateful right now. I was like, I feel love. I feel so much love. And then in that moment, I like realized how freaking manic I must have sounded on my stories, and I was like, I, and now you've officially seen me manic <laughs> on my Instagram stories. Hilarious. Like, it's just hilarious, because this is... This is the range that we have within us. We have the range to go from A to Z on the emotional scale. And it's all good. It's all good. I don't have anything around it. So after I had this cry, I went to my my, um, network chiropractor, Dr. Teresa, who is like my spiritual mentor. She's absolutely amazing. I see her every single week. She's incredible. And I just basically cried for like, I don't know, a good 15 minutes of our session together and she held space for me and she was explaining that, you know, we have energy vortexes in our bodies from past trauma, past trauma, circumstances, whatever happened in our life, they're like little energy vortexes that get stored in our bodies and then something triggers it. And we have a release. And crying is definitely a release. And it feels so good if you let it. If you can stop making yourself wrong for it and just feel the experience of having a soul shower, it's unbelievable. So, so refreshing. And you don't even have to know why you're crying. That's something that I've realized too. So with um, with the energy vortexes and the trigger she was like something triggered you when you read those messages that people were rooting for you she's like how did that make you feel and I was like I don't even know it just it made me feel like I'm supposed to root for others like I I feel weird having people root for me like I don't want to be that person like I don't I don't feel worthy of being that person it was a, a whole lot came out of that and She just let me understand that these energy vortexes, if we don't move them out of our bodies, they get stuck and stagnant. And that's what compounds and that's what creates resistance in the body and breaks down our bodies. And it was just such an aha moment for me. I already knew that, but it just showed up differently. 
And so I was like, People need to know this. This is so this is so good. It is so beautiful. And it really ties into the I love you right there, right? I can love myself right there in that moment of being triggered. I can love myself right there in the moment of feeling so vulnerable, putting myself out there. I can love myself right there, crying my eyes out in front of my mentor, right? So it's just like all comes together that way and she told me a story once and she has the best stories and she told me a story about someone giving her a fig tree and she was like someone gave me this fig tree and it's such a beautiful fig tree and I planted it she loves her garden and plants and everything she's just like oh she's like oh oh she's just I can't explain her she's incredible and so She's telling me about this fig tree and she's had it for years and she's moved it a couple times because it never grew any figs. So she thought maybe over here, better sunlight or maybe over here, more shade. And she's, she just couldn't figure out why after all these years, she still could not get any figs. And so this last year she said, she went up to the fig tree and she looked at the fig tree and she said, I love you fig tree. I love you right there. And she asked herself, am I going to be okay if this fig tree never produces figs? She was like, yeah, I'm going to be okay. Cool. And guess what happened? That year, the fig tree made figs, grew some figs. What do you know? The fig tree grew figs because she accepted and loved it exactly as it was and she wasn't trying to force it to be anything other than it was and I just love that story so much because it's just like anything in life when we don't have the attachment to it we can allow it to just be as it is and we can love it right there love it right there love it right there and Dr. Teresa taught me how to love myself right there and it's really beautiful the way that I've been processing grief is very much so I don't know. I wouldn't say textbook. I would say when I feel it, I feel it. And it's it comes in waves. And when the waves come, they come really fucking strong. And I have to allow myself to just cry and feel the feelings that I feel. And when I look at pictures and I go down that rabbit hole of looking at pictures, I, I get really, really upset. I get really sad. And then I'll be on a long FaceTime with my sister and just feel so grateful for our relationship that we have and the father that we shared together and just excited that I have her in my life. And then I'll go to acupuncture and be floating away from my body and then see my dad in my third eye and be like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, and just break out in tears. And it really does hit you at like the weirdest times. And then I had a week of just feeling completely numb, and I couldn't cry. And I was like, what's wrong with me? I can't cry. And then I had to remind myself, I love you right there, even when I can't cry. And my inner voice is asking myself, Am I grieving right? Am I doing this grieving thing right? Am I doing it right? Am I doing a good job? I've never done this before. All of those questions and then feeling guilty like I wish I had more time with my dad. I wish I spent more time with him. I wish I showed up more. I wish I called him more. And it's like all those feelings of guilt come up, right? And it's all normal. It's all part of it and I have to just let myself feel it. And I called one of my dear friends, one of my longest friends, my preschool best friend, Molly, who lost her mom, who was my mom's best friend, Linda, And she said, you know, we always wish that when we, we always wish that we had more time with someone if we only knew they were going to die, right? Like, it's like, I was like, well, if I knew he was going to die, I would have been there more. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It's like the lesson here and get this, please get this. Call your parents, call your people, call your family. You know, you get that nudge to call someone, you get that download but you're too busy or you're tired or you don't feel like talking or it's always worth it to make 
the call and I knew that my dad loved me so much and I know that he knew how much I loved him and I still wish that I had more time, you know? Always make time for the people in your life and ask them all the questions that you have. One of the biggest lessons is just there's nothing more important than family. And I realized that like this summer specifically, I was very wrapped up in my own world. Business and I'm I'm out here with you guys and you know I'm I'm doing my thing and there's nothing wrong with doing your thing. However, I needed to learn the lesson. For me personally, like my personal lesson is that business is not everything. Business is not everything. You can't get your time back. You cannot get your time back. So for me, like, you know, I haven't seen my mom in a bit. I'm going to go down to Florida and spend as much time down there as I can to see her and spend time with her because that to me is way more important than business. And I think I had to learn that as part of my journey to motherhood as well. There's a lot of lessons packed in here. And I want I want to share that with you because you might be in that place right now where your business is everything or whatever your work or career is everything. And that's cool. And there's more. There's more to life. Um, not that I didn't know that before, but I got it on a much deeper level. Because of course I knew that, right? But I got it more on a cellular level and... I'm getting the message for myself that it's a lesson that I need to take with me into the future. It's not just for right now. It's forever. It's a forever lesson. It's a lesson that a lot of people don't learn actually in their life. So I feel so grateful for that lesson. I feel like my grandfather tried to teach me that with his passing because I was in the middle of the biggest launch of my life. I had an just about $300,000 launch with the Quantum Coaching Academy and I was in the middle of the launch when he passed away and I'm it was it was so it was just so crazy because I was so focused on my business at that point and everything that we had worked towards was this launch and like making it happen and launching this program but also my grandfather just passed away and like I need to take space for that and I need to make time for that. So I got into this place of like, what's right and wrong? Am I allowed to work on my business? But while I'm grieving my grandfather, like, am I allowed to sell something while I'm losing someone while I lost someone? Like it's, this is my internal, this has been my internal process and I'm sharing it because I do think that we all have these thoughts and feelings that go through us, that move through us, that we don't get to process out loud. We don't, we don't tell people we're afraid of what people will think, or we're afraid that it's wrong to think that way. And I'm sharing this to make the point of there's no one way to grieve and there's no one way to live your life. And there actually is no right or wrong. It is whatever your process is, whatever you feel. And that's the work. Right? That's the work and being able to meet yourself exactly where you are and love yourself right in the midst of feeling some of the strongest emotions you might ever feel in your life. Can you love yourself right there? How powerful of a question is that? And that question that Dr. Teresa posed to me has given me so much grace on my journey. It's given me access to grace. And something else huge that has shown up for me is uh, when my dad passed away, I started to receive flowers. And I don't know if you remember in the episode of My Life Story in 33 Minutes, my dad gave me 15 roses. And that was kind of our symbol. And I feel like he was like having all these people send me flowers. I got more flowers in a week than I have in a lifetime. It was honestly overwhelming. Every single day I would get two or three or sometimes four. After the funeral, I came home to seven packages, five flowers. I mean, flowers upon flowers. My whole house had so many flowers. I can't even tell you. I mean, I am so blessed. I felt I felt like 
wow. I was blown away by the support and the love. And let me also say that I had already had like six vases of flowers for my birthday. My mom sent me flowers. My best friend sent me flowers. So it was like a lot of flowers. (laughs) And I was overwhelmed by the support. But also one of the big lessons that I realized between receiving all of these gifts and flowers and people were sending me gifts friends friends were sending me these things and some people that are acquaintances to me and I was just like holy shit I have to receive this love and support that's just being like showered upon me and that part was hard for me receiving that love and support was really really challenging and I, I, it sounds weird to say that. It's just like, I want to be the one to give that to people. It's kind of like the same thing that came up when people told me they were rooting for me. Um, even the love and support that was poured out by all of you on Instagram and Facebook and just so much love that you don't even know what to do with it. And so my practice has been allowing myself to sit with those feelings of receiving receiving the support, receiving the love, knowing that I'm worthy of it. It's like I almost feel like I'm unworthy of receiving that and I don't want anyone to go out of their way for me. And I, I'm i sure that's a little bit surprising to hear, but that's truly what came up for me and I'm grateful it did because it allowed me to sit with it and to process through it. And the people in my life have been so incredible. My team has been so incredible. Um, so my birthday was the 28th. My dad passed on the 29th and I don't think I shared this with you guys, but my, um, my second mom, Bev, she was my dad's wife and she told me that she told my dad on speakerphone, even though he wasn't really able to like, he wasn't conscious really that it was my birthday and that he should wait, (laughs) wait to pass, not on my birthday. And he actually waited for me he passed away on the 29th at 1 42 in the morning he actually waited for my birthday to be over and I really believe in that and I was like blown away by that um and so the next day on the 29th my podcast manager came over and guess what he brought me he brought me balloons that said 500k because our podcast hit 500,000 downloads and it was like the most bittersweet feeling because it was just such a a day of sadness and also that was very exciting it was like a paradox um and I was so grateful that he did that he really brightened my day and he brought me a green juice and it was just like so sweet shout out Brett Gordon check him out on YouTube you guys get fit done just a little little shout out there because he's he's incredible he's absolutely incredible check him out get fit done he's awesome um And so where am I going with this? So yeah, it was just a, it was a practice of receiving love and support and him celebrating the podcast and me and my birthday. And I was overwhelmed by it all, honestly, like, like, wow, I'm, I'm receiving this. Like, this is awesome and hard to receive at the same time. But I think the lesson that I want to share here that I'm receiving for myself and I think is important for you to hear is that as healers, as coaches, as light workers in the world, which you all are, you all are, you are, is that as, as easy as it is for us to pour into other people, we have to allow people to pour into us. It's the same thing with self-care. It's like when you give and give and give and you're not pouring back into yourself, but this is different because it's actually having other people pour into you and it's a weird sensation and it's a beautiful sensation and most of the time we deflect those things when they happen I know I do and I try to you know flip it around and give 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 and it's really important to allow people to be there for you and know that you're worthy of it and that you deserve it and I've had beautiful conversations with my other best friend Nola around this where she's you know helping me move through something through text message meanwhile she has a full-time job she has a beautiful baby she has a husband and she's writing me these books you know via text message of trying to help me and I said to her to be honest right now this even feels like it feels hard 
for me to receive this from you because I'm worried that I'm a burden to you right now and that I'm taking up too much of your time or in your space. And she was like, what are you talking about? Like, she's like, it's an honor to be your best. Or like, I don't remember what she said, but it was more along the lines of like how she wants to be the best, best friend that she can to me. And she is just by being herself. She doesn't have to do anything for her to be a better best friend to me. She's an incredible person. And so it's just interesting all these things that are popping up. It also feels like a reminder to take up space and allow myself to take up space. And these are like lessons on lessons on lessons, which are all blessings if we can see them that way. It's pretty cool. It's cool when you can allow yourself to have these experiences and feel these feelings, right? Love yourself right there, be able to process through them, and then be able to share them out with people and create a ripple effect with them. I have to just preface and share that like I have never allowed myself to be this vulnerable and raw and sharing these things in such real time with you. Um, It feels scary, but it also feels extremely freeing because there have been layers shed of old perfectionism or seeming like I need to have all of my stuff together or that I would seem weak if I was to share so transparently. And what I'm realizing is that there's a there's a great strength here for me and for you and to give you permission to share as much as you want. Not everybody's meant to. You know, my husband, he's like he's so private and he thinks that I'm so like public and I am <clears throat> more public now than ever and I'm blessed that he supports me in that. We have different missions in life and his mission doesn't require him to share that stuff, right? But mine does, and maybe yours does, and maybe not. It doesn't matter either way. I just want to share that it's scary to let yourself be fully seen. And also, it's one of the biggest um, biggest things that I have worked through and on in my life. Like the feeling of always needing to perform to gain acceptance and, and love in my life. And... Um, you know, overcompensate and try and be perfect. However, I realized that (laughs) I'm here to actually um, shatter the illusion of perfection through my stories, through my experience, through what I can share with you and realize that my legacy and impact is directly tied to my willingness to be seen. Holy shit. Oh my god. I was told that by an astrologer years ago. She was like, your success of and success to me is impact is directly related to your willingness to be seen. And at that time, I was like terrified to like even go on a live video. I didn't even have a podcast then. And I thought it was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to break through and I'm just going to go on a live video and I'll start a podcast. Like, I'll be seen. But I just got that, like, in real time with you guys on such a deep level. Oh, breakthroughs. Thank you for, thank you guys for being my therapy session today. (laughs) But I want to tie this up in a bow because this is what's coming through right now. What's coming through is that no matter what you're going through, you could still be in alignment. And yes, I'm in a season of grieving. I'm in a season that I've never been in before and I've had every emotion you could you could imagine on the emotional scale. I felt extreme emptiness, sadness, fear, anger, hurt, guilt. I've also felt joy and gratitude and abundance and blessings and love I felt all of it and my business is crushing it right now it's absolutely crushing it 
So for those of you who are still stuck in that manifestation mode of like, oh, I have to be happy all the time and I have to always wear my rose-colored glasses, I want to give you permission to take the glasses off, to feel and see everything that you need to, to give yourself that grace to love yourself right where you are right now in the thick of it, and to trust that the universe knows everything you want, The universe knows the quickest, most fastest way to deliver it to you. And all you have to do is everything you can to meet yourself where you are. Because the quickest way to shift into a higher vibration is to move through the feelings that you're going through right now. You can't bypass them. You can, but they'll catch up to you later. So feel them, heal them, feel to heal, feel to heal all day. Give yourself what you need. If you want to work, work. If you want to sleep, sleep. If you want to go out, go out. If you want to throw a party, throw a party. Like There's no one way to do anything. There's no one way to do anything. We say that all the time for business. There's no one way to do your business, right? There's no one way to do freaking anything you're free you're free now the only time that we don't feel free is when we enslave ourselves Woo! we did some work today thank you so much for listening you know i love my bam fam If this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone who you know would love it too because we live for the ripple effect over here. And how can you best support the show? Make sure you're subscribed, hit the five stars, and leave a review on iTunes and let me know how the podcast has impacted you. I love being part of your real-time journey, so screenshot the episode and tag me and my guests on Instagram at manifestwithash. Now say it with me. I am my own power source. I am the master of my own energy, and I deserve everything that I desire. We don't just talk about it over here. We be about it. Now go get them.